www.ww.i's genius shelter hack that beats modern tarps. Soldiers use this to survive bomb storms. Now, before we dive in, if you crave the kind of history that textbooks skip, the stories that survived under mud and fire, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now. Because what you're about to hear isn't just another wartime tale. Honestly, it's proof that pure ingenuity can beat steel, bombs, and even the weather itself. During World War II, when rain turned battlefields into rivers and trenches into graves, soldiers faced a brutal truth. Nothing stayed dry. Tarps ripped, canvas leaked, and so-called waterproof gear failed the moment it met a real European downpour. Yet somehow, right in the middle of the chaos, a handful of frontline engineers discovered a technique so effective it kept men dry under bomb storms, insulated against freezing cold, and outperform materials we still use today. It wasn't a product. It wasn't some military secret from a factory lab. It was born from dirt, ash, and raw human survival instinct. Welcome to the story of the Sealed Earth Shelter, the forgotten field engineering marvel that proved you don't need modern gear to master nature. When tarps became traps. By 1942, Allied and Axis forces had both learned a harsh lesson. In constant rain and shellfire, tarps weren't just useless, they were dangerous. Once soaked, they sagged, tore, and froze solid overnight. Canvas covers collapsed under their own weight, filling trenches with icy sludge. Soldiers called them death sheets. The ground itself became the enemy. Mud sucked the warmth out of shelters and morale out of men. Yet even in these flooded hellscapes, some dugouts stayed miraculously dry. No factory material, no magic, just brain power and dirt. Those soldiers had realized something simple, but revolutionary. The best waterproofing wasn't above ground. It was in the ground. Turning dirt into armor. The genius came from frontline engineers, men who had to think fast with nothing but shovels, fire and physics. They started observing how traditional rural ovens and cobhouses handled moisture. Those old world structures used layered materials that absorbed sealed and reflected heat in cycles. So the engineers borrowed that principle and weaponized it for survival. They developed what they called the sealed earth roof method, a kind of natural sandwich of clay, ash and waxed fabric that could withstand bomb blasts, torrential rain and freezing winds. This wasn't guesswork. It was an early form of what we now call passive insulation design. Every layer had a specific job. The outer clay absorbed impact and redirected moisture. The middle layer, the secret source, was a waxed fabric that acted like a waterproof membrane, and the inner soil stabilized temperature and trapped heat. When done right, it was practically bulletproof to the weather. So, here's how they did it. First came the frame, a simple arch made from willow or hazel rods, flexible enough to bend but strong enough to hold weight. Over that skeleton, soldiers packed about an inch of clay mixed with fine ash or charcoal dust. The ash wasn't random filler. It absorbed moisture, tightened the clay as it dried, and made it fire resistant. Once that base layer hardened slightly, the troops added their waterproof skin. No fancy supplies here. They used whatever fabric they had Tent, canvas, bed rolls, even uniforms stitched together. Then they brushed melted wax or animal fat over it until it formed a glossy sealed coating. 
That's what transformed ordinary cloth into a hydrophobic shield. Literally, waterproof skin. Then came the final layer. Another thin coating of clay, this time mixed with straw or grass. This protected the waxed fabric from shrapnel, sunlight and wear. Once it dried, it became a tough, breathable shell that shed rain like a duck's back. Soldiers reported staying dry for days inside these bunkers, even while artillery shells cratered the earth around them. Nearby units with regular tarps weren't so lucky. Their shelters collapsed into sodden heaps within hours. Modern tarps rely on surface tension. Once they're punctured or stretched, they lose their integrity and leak instantly. The sealed earth method didn't rely on tension. It used natural redirection and absorption. When rain hit the surface, the outer clay spread the water outward, not inward. The waxed cloth underneath acted as a sealed barrier and the ash in the clay neutralized acids from smoke and rain, preventing rot and odor, something crucial for troops living underground for weeks at a time. After the war, engineers tested reconstructed versions of these bunkers. The results were jaw-dropping. A well-built sealed earth roof could resist four straight days of heavy rain without letting a single drop through. And with a simple trench drain or sloped floor, even flood zones could stay bone dry inside. What those wartime engineers stumbled upon accidentally was something today's eco-builders call thermal mass sheltering. It's the idea that earth and clay can act as both insulation and protection. When it's wet, it seals itself. When it's dry, it reflects heat. In other words, the shelter breathed with the environment. During rain, the clay swelled to close cracks. Under the sun, it hardened and reflected warmth, keeping the interior cool. It was a living structure, not a static one. Modern architects pay thousands to replicate this same balance in sustainable housing. Those World War II soldiers, they did it with a shovel and a bit of wax. And here's the kicker. Many of those bunkers scattered across Europe are still standing. Eighty years later, the fabrics have decayed, but the clay shells remain intact, still shedding water. This method isn't stuck in history. Off-grid builders, preppers and outdoor survivalists still use it, sometimes without realizing it's a World War II invention. You can build a version of your own with simple materials. All you need is local clay, wood ash and any tough fabric. Mix about four parts clay to one part ash for the first coat. Spread it evenly over a frame, let it stiffen, then layer on your waxed or fat coated fabric. Finish with a protective clay straw mix. What you get is a breathable, waterproof, temperature stable shelter a roof that works with nature, not against it, and it costs next to nothing. Whether you're camping, building a cabin, or planning for a long-term off-grid retreat, this old war trick still beats synthetic tarps that rip and rot within a season. What makes this method more than just clever engineering is the mindset behind it. Those soldiers didn't have access to stores or supply chains. They had to read the land, understand materials, and adapt instantly. That's what real ingenuity looks like. Not technology, awareness, not gadgets, resourcefulness. They weren't trying to reinvent the world. They were just trying to stay alive in it. But in doing so, they rediscovered something we've forgotten how to let nature do the heavy lifting. So next time you see an old photo of soldiers sitting dry in a dugout while rain pounds the trenches above, remember this. It wasn't luck. 
It was knowledge layered in clay, ash, and grit. If you love stories like this, raw, ingenious, and buried under history's rubble, subscribe to The Forgotten War Fronts and share this video with someone who appreciates real craftsmanship in survival. Because the smartest lessons from the past aren't written in books. They're still hiding underground, waiting to be uncovered.